Welcome back to Mathematical Linguistics. Last time we introduced finite state machines and formal languages a little bit informally, so this time I want to introduce the formal definition of finite state automata. Uh, it's the same thing as finite state machines, A's, M's, same difference. Okay, so an FSA is a five tuple consisting of Q, which is the finite set of states. These are represented by our circles. We have sigma, an alphabet, which consists of the symbols we allow, so A, B, C, all the way up to Z in English. We have delta, which is a function that takes a state and a symbol and maps it to another state. So essentially, what this means is if we have Q1 and we have the symbol B, it'll take us to the state Q2. So this notation just means a state and a symbol gets taken to another state. We have Q0, which is the start state. Uh, this might be labeled as Q1, Q2, whatever. I just use Q0 as the default start state. And then we have a set F. So of course this is a subset of all of our states, and it is the set of except states. So like I said, you can have more than one except state. So for instance, maybe it can end with A or B. So we can have two different except states if we want. We can have 500 but it just has to be a subset of our states. Okay, so that's the five mathematical components of a finite state machine. So you don't need a picture. You can just list the finite set of states, the alphabet, the transition function, the start state, and set of except states, and uh, that'd be it. So given this finite state machine, I want to fill out the mathematical definition. So Q, that's our finite set of states. Well, we have two states here. We have Q0 and Q1. So Q is our set of states. Sigma is our alphabet. And it looks like we're just using the symbols A and B. Okay, so our alphabet is AB. Our states are Q0, Q1. Now our transition function a little bit tricky. So remember, it takes a state and a symbol and it maps it to another state. So for instance, we can have states Q0, Q1, and they can take symbols A and B. So if we have Q0 and A, what do we get? Well, if we start at Q0 and we take A, we go back to Q0. So this Q0A will take us back to Q0. What about Q0 and B? Well, we start at Q0 and we use B, we go to Q1. So this is going to be Q1. Okay, if we do Q1 and A, we get mapped back to Q1. And if we do Q1 and B, we also go back to Q1. So that's the transition function. Which is our start state? Well, we see the squiggly arrow going here to Q0. So our start state is Q0. And what are our final states? What are the states that we accept? So this is going to be the set containing Q1. So remember, this is the set of except states or final states. So we do have to have a set here when we write them. So this is the set Q1. Because remember, if we said, okay, Q0 is also an except state, then this would be the set containing Q1 and Q0. Okay, so that's the mathematical definition. Now we're going to move into regular languages. So we say that a language is regular if there is a finite state automata that accepts the language. So if we can write our language as a finite state machine, then the language is going to be regular. So for instance, in the last video, we looked at a finite state machine that accepted numbers divisible by three. So the language M could be the set of strings W such that the sum of symbols in W is divisible by three. We also looked at the on and off switch, which is the language that accepts strings W such that W ends in a one. So we've seen these two finite state machines. So these two languages are regular. Okay, so we can perform operations on regular languages. So if we have two languages L1 and L2, and we have strings w, then we can say that the union of two languages is going to be the set of x such that 
Well, x is going to be a string in the language one, or x is going to be a string in language two. I should change this w to x and y because I'm just going to use x and y. Okay, what about the intersection? Well, the intersection is going to be the set of x, such that x is going to be in language one, and x is going to be in language two. So these aren't new, these are no surprise. But there are two new operators that come in languages that we don't see in set theory. So we have the concatenation symbol, so that's the circle. And we saw that in an example in the first video. So L1 concatenated L2. This is the set of strings x, y, such that x is in language one and y is in language two. So L1 concatenate L2 says the first part of the string is from L1, the second is from L2. So this is not the same thing as L2 concatenate L1. So we kind of think of this, so, well, we kind of think of this, you can think of this similar to something like A cross B, which we know is usually not the same thing as B cross A. So we can make this sort of parallel to the Cartesian product with concatenation. But you didn't hear that from me. Okay, then we have the star operator. So the star operator is very special because what the star operator does is it lets us take any number of the string in the language. So for instance, this is the string x1, x2, all the way up to xk, where k has to be greater or equal to zero. And each of our strings is in our language. So for instance, I want to see if I have an example. OK, I do have examples here. So we can go over the examples here. OK, so uh, let's start with star first. So let's take a look at the, the, uh, the definition here. So L1 star, x1, x2, all the way to xk, where k is greater or equal to 0, and the string is in the language. So this could be the empty string. It could be the string x1. It could be the string x1, x2, so on and so forth. So when we start with L2 star here, well, L2 is going to be the language consisting of the zeros and ones. So it accepts zero and it accepts one. So L2 star, well, it could accept the empty string. So the star operator will always accept the empty string since the definition says K has to be greater or equal to zero, which means the empty string is part of it. Okay then it could accept one of the strings. So it could accept zero or one. Then it can accept two strings together. So zero, zero, or maybe zero, one, or one, zero, or one, one. Then we can put three of the strings together. So we get zero, 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 one. And that just continues on forever. Okay, so that is the star operator. Let's do the union and the intersection. So the union, of course, uh, it's going to be in language one or language two. So if language one is ABC, language two is zero one, then L1 union, L2 is going to be ABC zero one. L1 intersection L2 is going to be the empty set since they share no common strings. And the concatenation says the first part is from L1 and the second part is from L2. So again, this is like the cross product. We can have A0, A1, or we can have B0, B1, or we can have C0 or C1. So those are the examples of the regular operators on languages. Okay, so we have some properties here. And if L1 and L2 are regular, then the intersection is going to be regular, the union will be regular, the concatenation will be regular, and the star operator is regular. Which means that if you can draw a finite state machine for L1, and you can draw a finite state machine for L2, then you can combine the finite state machines in some way to produce all four of these combinations. And that will be gone over in the next video. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave them below, and I'll do the best that I can to answer them.